think we're good. All right. Hey guys, uh, welcome to yet another Tuesday talk, uh, part of the Norton Sports Health KDF Mini and Marathon Training Program that we're offering every Tuesday at noon to cover different topics and sometimes different locations and just to kind of cover all the information you will need as you're training for the mini or marathon. So you might notice I'm in a different spot this week. I am at the Norton Sports Performance Center, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we are going to do some cross training. We're going to talk about cross training and strength training today. So uh, just a couple of things I want to talk about before we get started. You are muted. You are supposed to be muted so you can listen. That is perfect. Um, also, there is a Q&A feature right down there in your Zoom box that you can use to answer or to ask any questions throughout the program. So if you got a question already in your head, pop it in that Q&A. As we're talking about stuff, pop it in the Q&A. Don't be afraid, don't be shy. Anything, any questions you have, go ahead and throw them in there and we will get to them towards the end of the program. And then also, this is being recorded and it will be posted in the Facebook group later and also emailed out. So if you can't stay on the whole time, you can always watch it later from the Facebook group. But now we want to kick things off. I have Dan Martin here with me. <laughs> Dan is out here at Sports Performance Center. And tell us a couple things about yourself. I'm Danny Martin. Um, I've worked here for about two years, since about January of 2019. I got my undergrad degree at Transylvania University in exercise science. And then I came to here to Louisville at the University of Louisville and got my master's of science in exercise physiology. And I came with a concentration in strength and conditioning. We came here for one of our classes, and Hammer ended up hiring a couple of us, and I've uh, stayed on here for about two years. Um, so kind of a little bit about my training as well. Um, I know you all are, have your own types of training, and there are lots of different wonderful types of training. Um, so, for example, I'm actually a power lifter. I've competed in a couple different meets. Um, yeah, hopefully something like that, right? <laughs> uh, so power lifting is focusing on three different movements, a squat, a bench press, and a deadlift. You kind of get to total those three movements up, highest number wins. So we've seen some really strong people through these meets and uh, that's kind of the training that I kind of go with. So. Cool. So he knows a lot. Um, a, lot of, a lot of background, a lot of education. So he's going to be a great asset to us today to talk about cross training and strength training for our distance runners that we are working with here. So um, your general thoughts. Tell me your general thoughts on, on cross training and strength training for our distance athletes as we're going through this training program. Uh, so kind of like we mentioned earlier, uh, kind of defining cross training, what that would even look like for a long distance runner like you all. Um, so I would kind of define that as largely anything that is not your sport. So if your sport is long distance running, trying to get away from that and try to not put the taxes on the body that a long distance run would. So, for example, getting on the bike would be a form of cross training. Um, kind of swimming would be another cross training. So we're kind of getting similar effects with those movements, but we're not necessarily doing the running have a little bit less impact on those joints. Um, as well as that, uh, the weightlifting or um, any sort of thing like that with resistance training, I would also consider that a form of cross training because we're kind of getting different effects from these movements that we're doing, but all of these are kind of going to supplement all that distance training and only going to make you better at whatever your given sport is. So a supplement, that's that's probably the key word right. you want to take from that. It's a supplement to your running, not necessarily just another day of running. Uh, working other muscles, uh, maybe some of the smaller muscles, and just giving basically the quads a break, right? Those things that kind of take a beating when you're running, you know, the quads, the ankles, the calves, things like that. We can do different types of resistance training that will benefit our running while maybe not having the same types of impact on those things. Yes. Yep. So you mentioned cross training, um, biking. I know you said one of those. Swimming is one of them. Um, yoga. Yoga would be a good one. <laughs> yoga. I actually started offering that here at Norton Sports Performance. We offer that three times a week. Um, feel free to come check it out. It's free for members and non-members. Come check us out. See how you like it. We'd love to hear the feedback. Yeah, so I do have that, those times. So in the month of March, guys, in the month of March, here at Northern Sports Performance, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., Thursday, 6.30 a.m. for you crazy people, and Saturday, 8 a.m. So you can come out here, get some free yoga, and also see this great facility because obviously they have classes going on in the background as well. So this is a facility that offers classes to help supplement your training. So check it out when you come out here. Um, okay, so basically what I wanted to do was to cover maybe the top 
five to seven strength exercises that you can do with or without equipment and also at home or in a gym. Because I know everyone's in a different level. Everyone has different uh, abilities and different things that they can get access to. So we want to kind of hit all the different topics or all the different areas here to still get in a strength training workout on a cross training day, or maybe even if it's an easy run day, you could actually do this right before your run and just activate those muscles. So uh, Dan here is going to take me through. I'm going to be the little guinea pig here so you can watch me exercise. And if you want to step up, I'll just kind of come in the background here. <laughs> right. oh, let me move the camera. So, we're live. Oh, yeah, we're live. Thank you. In a little different way. Um, so, for example, if I have stepped and grabbed one of those dumbbells, you're going to have, have fun grabbing one of those 20 pound dumbbells, Good right? Lord, of course, you have the 20 pound ones. Absolutely. So, <laughs> what I'm going to have her do is hold that vertically by one of the bells oh. into a goblet position, right? Goblet this goblet. is, yeah, bingo, you got it. So, <laughs> getting this into a goblet position, all we're trying to do here is load this movement by adding some extra weight in the form of a dumbbell to this movement. Now, what that's going to do. Obviously, this is more load than if Stephanie were to just do a body weight squat. So you're kind of causing the body to adapt to be strong enough. Handle a squat with a little bit of that external load. So, kind of getting ready for that squat. What are we looking at? Whatever that may be, right? Just a below parallel squat. Bingo, yeah. sit straight down and come right back up. That was wonderful, right? Yes. So, as you inside that dumbbell now, I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to make you hold that dumbbell forever. You can also show a side view. Bingo, right? So, another thing I'll have her do now is step way down. Do not necessarily have a something to go on our back. We can get a barbell in a front rack position. Lots of different ways that we can have you squat, and a lot of different ways that we can load that movement. Right? So, if I do not have equipment, what I would like to play with these different variations and these different things that I can manipulate to make these squats harder would be something called time under tension. Right? The amount of time that I'm spending doing that squatting pattern. So what you saw her do was kind of pretty fast down, pretty fast up. That would just be a normal squat with no specified tempo on the squat. So in order to give you a, give her a little bit more stimulus, even though she no longer has equipment, what I'll have her do is I'll have her cross her arms to the front like so. Then she's going to have her feet set where she feels comfortable squatting. And then from the very top position to the bottom of that squat you saw her just do, I want her to take five seconds to do it, right? So what this is going to do, going to kind of teach her the movement a little bit more. You're spending more time doing the movement. Naturally, your body is going to get a little bit better at it. Those muscles are going to get more accustomed to doing this movement. Those muscles, because of this extra time under tension, as these muscles are stretching apart, these muscles are actually getting stronger. Having a little bit of hypertrophy in there, get a little bit of size on your muscles, and also just kind of get them comfortable doing these movements. So I will count her tempo for her from the very top. I'll start at five. By the time I get to one, she's the bottom, she at the bottom of the squat, and then she'll stand up. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Stand up. Fast. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So that was kind of an eccentric, something to take you from the largely when you're fighting gravity. So as she goes down, especially if she, if she were to have weight, going down nice and slow would be something that would become even more challenging, right? That could be even, even be challenging when you do not have that load. So another thing we can do is play with the amount of time you spend at the bottom of the squat, right? So now let's not be too mean to Stephanie. What I'm going to have her do is a three count on the way down and then a three count at the bottom, okay? Same exact thing we're playing with. We're just kind of reinforcing those positions. So at the hardest part of the squat, the very bottom, I'm going to make sure that her positioning is still perfect, right? A lot of times what happens if we're not super familiar with squatting, 
once we get to that bottom position, we can get in some not so nice positions, lead to some lower back pain, maybe lead to some knee pain as well, right? So again, three seconds on the way down, three seconds at the bottom, and she's gonna stand up fast. Ready? Three, two, one, pause. Three, two, one, stand up. Beautiful, All right? So kind of playing with those different variables to make this squat harder if we do not have equipment that can make it harder as an external load. Look at how much bigger right? my quads are. She's already getting much stronger, right? Okay, the very next thing what I would like to do is that is a very bilateral movement using both sides of your body, aka both legs, right? So now I'd like to get to a unilateral movement. So largely we're working on one leg and she's gonna take that into a split squat. She's gonna have her right foot forward and her left foot back. And actually, this is one of the ones that would be great as a side piece. Go ahead and face oh, away. Oh, oh, face oh, away. Oh, so, the way I would have her set up for this is I'm going to have her set up actually on the ground. She's going to put her left knee on the ground. All right, so the way I would want you to set this up is you all have a great angle at it right here. I want a right angle right here, a straight line from her shoulder down to her knee, and then a right angle in that back knee as well. And she is already set up in a pretty great position. And now, what we're trying to do is this leg that is up, that is largely the leg that we're trying to focus on with this split squat variation. All I'm going to have her do is cross her arms in the front and see if she had a wall here and a wall here. See, touch the nose of the wall, stand straight up. Bingo. That was beautiful. All right? She's going to relax. Very good job. So, a split squat, kind of what we're doing. Challenging our balance. That's probably a little bit harder to do as opposed to having both legs right under you where you're comfortable getting outside of that comfort zone. Also focusing on the balance while also focusing on really targeting one leg at a time. So would you stay on that leg? Bingo. So, so you, you would do a certain amount of those down. reps. Okay. So that leg's going to get real tired. And absolutely, we do not want you to be lopsided or have any sort of imbalance. So we're going to switch up our feet and make sure we hit both sides. Okay. I think most of us sit all that lunge, but it's right. easy. So. Right. So the, dist the distinction there. Split squat. Her feet didn't move. Okay. My lunge, she would start here and take, take that big step, right? Cool. So kind of the different variations of that. We can lunge in all sorts of different ways. We can lunge forward, we can lunge backwards, we can lunge to the side, all sorts of different ones that we can do to challenge ourselves with that balance as well as kind of getting stronger on one leg. Very next variation that I would probably like to see is a hamstring curl. So as we run, there's obviously going to be a lot of knee flexion, which will involve our hamstring, right? One of the great ones that you'll see here at North School Performance that we feel like to watch is green ball right here, this stability ball that we have right here. What we're going to have to do is I'm going to have Stephanie lay on her back. Right? She's going to lay on her back and put her heels up on that ball. Oh. I know what back. we're doing. Ooh. This is so hard. Okay. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I know. So again, we're trying to target this back and forth of her thighs. We're trying to get that hamstring um, a little bit more comfortable with all of that bending that running is going to have her do. Okay. So she has a really good setup. From, from here, all she's going to do is she's going to raise her hips up as high as she can. Once she has found that position, found this balance, which this ball wants to move, what she's going to try to do is curl her feet back in towards her butt. And as she does that, her hips try to rise a little bit, right? Send your legs again. And as you can tell, let's see if our hips can rise as we curl in. That was beautiful, right? Oh, yeah. Nice and controlled as we come back out. Relax. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, so those first two things you saw us do, those would be targeting those quads, that very front part of your thigh. And as we, just like I said earlier, I don't want you to be kind of dominant left or right. I don't want you to be dominant front or back either, right? A lot of people come in here, they come to this facility and they have no problem squatting. Lots of people are very comfortable squatting. We call them quad pillars. Right, something like that. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is also get a little bit of that hamstring in there to kind of help the quads out. Because both of them are going to be working at all times while we're doing this run, right? Lots of different variations we can do with that hamstring. So I'm actually going to challenge Stephanie today to give her a harder one because this great movement for those of you who do not necessarily have equipment. So one thing we like to use a lot here at North School Performance is the what are called bow slides. And what these do, what's very significant about that is they slide on the turf. So what I'm going to have Stephanie do is set up in a very similar position to the stability ball hamstring curl, but instead her heels are going to be on those bow slides, right? Now the reason I say this is important for someone who maybe not, not have equipment is let's say you're at home and you don't have a membership to a gym, that's totally okay. We're gonna put something maybe on like a hardwood floor or a tile floor, maybe, maybe a paper plate, maybe a towel, something like that that would slide across the, the floor and allow you to curl your hamstrings down. And she's gonna have a very similar setup. 
she's going to have a very similar setup. She's going to bridge her hips up high, and then she's going to extend her legs, and then curl them back in. There you go. So that got a little tougher. So being lower to the ground, that's going to put even more stress on those hamstrings that Stephanie just experienced. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> kind of giving us a challenge. Giving us a challenge. We're all trying to get better at all of these things. All right. Okay. So. Hey, quick, quick reminder, guys. Questions in the Q and A section. If you're seeing anything here, or even if you just have a funny comment about how stupid I am, you can always put that in there too. All right. So we've done lots of different things that target the lower body. We did a single leg squat. We did a bilateral squat, and then we just targeted our hamstrings. Right. The, while we are running, the legs are obviously doing a lot of the work, right? So that is kind of the reason that these movements that I'm having Stephanie do, they're targeting the areas that we want to use. So there's gonna be that carryover. As her legs get stronger, as she adds a little bit of mass to her legs, she's gonna become a more efficient runner. Running is going to come a little bit easier. Those muscles are going to fire better, more efficiently. She's going to be a better runner and probably extend less energy as she does running, as she gets stronger, right? Another thing that's going to happen as we do this is our tendons are going to be stronger. You saw that bilateral squat. When she gets down to the bottom of the squat and she's simply holding this position, these tendons are really being challenged, those joints are really being challenged, and they are going to have to adapt to that challenge and get stronger and they'll be better for it in the long run. All right. Now that we have targeted the lower body, we're going to go to an upper body movement, right? If I could only have you do one, it would probably be some sort of row variation, right? Kind of a pulling motion. If you're pulling something to you, that is a rowing variation, right? So we're, we don't just focus on the lower body. I, I know a lot of you think that, oh, well, all I need to do is just some leg exercises. No, we want to stabilize the whole body and have the whole body in shape. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. So what I'm going to have her do, is she's going to grab one of those dumbbells, and while she does that, I'm going to explain why the heck I would want you to row. So as we run, our arms are moving back and forth. One of the big, move, one of the big movers for that is going to be our lat, right here running up and down your side. Right? So these rowing variations, we're going to get this back part of our back as well as our side, our lap. We're going to get those a little bit stronger. They're going to make all of the arm movements as well as improve our posture. These things are just going to get better as we get stronger and better. So are these rows going to make our arms go more back and forward than chicken arms? So, yes, they, they can definitely we want to avoid the chicken arms. Right. We want, to, we want to have you all have a little bit better mechanics as we run, as well as it's going to kind of make you more efficient. Probably teach you to keep those elbows tucked in a little bit more again. More goal, right? So, what I'm going to have Stephanie do is get into another split stance, just like she did earlier with that split squat. For a little bit of help with this, she's going to put her left hand on her left knee. Right? She's going to kind of lean her chest forward, and that dumbbell is just hanging right here. Now, what I'm going to have her do, she has that dumbbell in her right hand. I want her to pull her elbow up and back, and then come back down. Get two more reps, just like that. Very good. Yesterday, so hey, there you go. <laughs> that is a wonderful job. And obviously, once she's done with that right arm, she's obviously moved right into the left arm. So her feet switch. Wonderful job. And she's now going to row on that side. Absolutely. So lots of different variations we can do with this. Okay. Pulling variations get kind of challenging when we don't have equipment because you have to be some, doing something that is pulling yourself to you or pulling something to you rather. So when she has a dumbbell, um, when we were making a bunch of videos on how to uh, how to be able to work out during all this pandemic stuff, uh, we had a, another coach here, Griffin, saying, hey, grab a jug of milk, grab a stock of flour, find something that is heavy that you can hold, that yes, we can get to a good position, and we can work on our back and get ourselves stronger, kind of improve posture, kind of improve some muscle, okay? If we do not have any equipment, what I'm going to have Stephanie do is demo what's called a prone I, Y, and T. So she's going to be laying on her belly. Laying on her belly, however you feel like you can orient yourself to do this. So, laying on her belly, yes, we can see you. So, what we're trying to still do is work on the musculature of the back, but if we do not have equipment, we'll have to get a little bit, um, kind of get a little bit creative with it. So, what I'm going to have her do is lay flat on the floor, her arms are straight forward, right? As you can see, she's standing up tall, or her arms are up tall like an eye. And what she's going to do is she's going to try to keep her arms straight, but raise both of her entire arm up as high as she can. Bingo. So what I'd rather her do is put chin and tuck towards the floor. So this is not necessarily turning into a Superman where we're going to start your lower back, but instead if you're working on the upper back muscles up here. Okay, you can relax. Now that forehead stays tucked towards the turf, and I want you to move your arms out to a 45 degree angle and 
swing a lot. Okay. First arm space straight up towards the ceiling, and now she raises both arms up as high as she can. She's doing a lot. Okay. Bingo, that's it. Sets down. She's now going to a bar. Then she's going to set her arms back down, and her arms going straight out to her side into a T. Straight down to her side, her thumbs are still pointing straight up, and she raises her arms straight off the ground. There you go. Keeping your chest down towards the ground. You can relax. Very good job. Okay. So what we are trying to do, and what you probably saw, is kind of getting away from these rounded postures that sometimes we see here instead. Kind of supporting that back, getting a little bit stronger in this posture, and uh, gets better as we do this move again. Only going to make the way stronger, more efficient. So when I raise my arms, I feel that back here. I'm not crunching shoulders up around here. I'm using back here. Kind of working on those uh, back muscles too as well. All right, Stephanie, stand up. All right, so the very last thing I'd like to talk about is probably something that you all would have guessed would have already happened, and that is going to be some core moves, right? A lot of the ones that we would also have you doing here, you've probably heard of as well. We have all of the different planks, right? We have push-up position planks. We have elbow planks. We have side planks. We have all sorts of different things that um, a plank, what it's trying to do is you are trying to maintain a position and not let gravity kind of puts you in that bad position. So I'm going to have Stephanie demo push-up position plank. Push-up position plank. This is going to be a great movement for those of you who do not necessarily have equipment. Now, a couple of things I'm looking for. From her shoulder down to her wrist is an absolutely vertical line. Right? Lots of people, as they set up, they want their arms to be further than their shoulders. She did a pretty good job of setting up. And then I want a straight line from her shoulder all the way down to her ankle. Right? So you all have a great angle of this. So if you were to do a bad job for hips to go way up, you know, that would look like if her hips were way up, right? You know this is no longer a straight line. Or the opposite, if her hips went way down, and this probably puts a little bit of stress on her lower back, probably not to thought about that, except she can relax. Right? A couple different variations we can play with that. We can do on our elbows. We can do a side plank. So a normal plank. We're trying, trying to fight the extension. We're not trying to arch that lower back. On a side plank, Let's go ahead and get to a side plank on this other one. Uh, let's go elbows. Let's go elbows. So she's getting to a side plank. What gravity wants to do is push hips down. But her core is kind of doing what's called anti lateral flexion. So it is avoiding those hips going down and it's staying in a straight line. Right? So we want to work out with that. So there are lots of different things that we can play with in regards to um, variables for a plank variation. We can kind of get on uh, elbows. Hands, side plank, different things like that, right? If we do have equipment, what, uh, what I'm actually going to have to do is pick up both of these dumbbells. Both of these dumbbells, right? All we're trying to do now. He's killing. <laughs> all we're trying to do now, and this is going to be one of the movements that you'll see here a lot if you come, come check us out. And this is all, all Stephanie's going to be doing is she has what's called a farmer's walk or a farmer's carry. So all I would have her do is grab those dumbbells. Ideally, these are a little bit heavier, right? All I'm going to make her do is hold those dumbbells and walk, right? So she's going to walk right at you. When she gets too close to the camera, Hi. she's going to turn around and walk to oh, me. Oh, not walking back. And go turn around and walk to me. Okay, now Stephanie did a wonderful job demoing these movements. Now, you can put this down. Was that more of a posture? So, yes, that's a very so good question. So I'm not, I'm not walking like this. Right, she's standing up tall. That would be kind of one of the cues you would hear myself or one of our other coaches say is stand up tall, squeeze those dumbbells. That's another thing we're kind of working on grip strength, which is not super specific to running, but kind of specific to weightlifting in general. It's having strong hands so you can hold a little bit heavier weight. Um, so, yes, different things we can manipulate in that sort of movement. If she just had one of these dumbbells, so she gets rid of this one, this dumbbell now wants to bend her laterally. She would obviously have to do a better job of standing up tall and that sort of thing. So we can put these dumbbells, kettlebells, we can put them in all sorts of positions. We can have one down here, we can have one up here, and we're looking to just maintain a good vertical posture wherever we put those weights, right? So we can put heavy ones down here, a lot of ones up top. They're going to challenge our positioning, challenge our posture. Once we get really good at that, that will probably translate to a better running posture. We're going to be so good at holding our chest up, staying nice and tall. We're going to be probably going to be a little bit more efficient running. And again, if you don't have weight, something else might work. And if you want really lightweight, something I've heard is just uh, cans of Campbell's soup. 
because <laughs> I Absolutely. mean they're kind of heavy so yeah you know whatever works for you milk jugs on the road like you mentioned or on the squats there's lots of things you got to get creative if you're working from home absolutely kind of doing what you can best you can with what you have um so yes we do not have equipment those core movements those planking those planking variations those are going to become kind of kind of your best bet i'm playing with all sorts of different things with those playing variations but once we have equipment we don't have to be necessarily as creative with the things we're doing all right all right so lots of good stuff Is that time bingo you yes yes those, those are the ones i was kind of happy to go after um obviously we had a pulling motion we want to throw in another pushing motion we can have we can have the push-ups of the world lots of people like to do push-ups that would be something that is just going to help kind of build up your chest Put up your triceps and that's going to again help with those arm action things. I'm really glad you didn't have me demonstrate a push up <laughs> because I'm not great at push ups, but it's okay. Right, so a little bit of upper body will help. Um, I know a lot of people either want to stay away from lower body because they're already getting the lower body to play with their running, but I would say that you would need a little bit of lower body to help kind of supplement all of that running that you all are doing, as well as the upper body movements kind of support the posture and get a little bit more musculature for all those arm action things that you all are going to do. Okay, all this stuff. Um, I do want to get to a few Facebook questions that were in the group. Let me move this camera up a little bit. So, uh, Facebook questions from the group. Let's see. Sarah Jones, you asked, how many days should you do strength training when running? And what are some good ones to do for each targeted area? So, we kind of covered the targeted areas, the hips, the cores, the quads, the hamstrings. Um, but how many days would you, would you suggest for distance? So that's going to be a little bit different based on kind of the what's called the training age of someone. So if someone has absolutely no experience in a weight room, it'd be irresponsible of me as a coach to say, hey, I need you in here five days a week. Right? What we would probably start up is probably two to three a week, especially if our running volume is pretty high. If we're doing a lot of running. I'm not going to say, hey, you need to be in the weight room every single day alongside that running. So I'd probably start with two or three days, kind of see how the body feels. Expect a little bit of soreness, especially those of you who have a little bit of equipment. Your body is not used to handling that stimulus and will need a little bit of time to say, hey, my body made me squat 20 pounds and I'm not used to doing that. So now my body needs to get stronger so that the, that 20 pounds is not so much, not kind of breaking me down as much. Um, so you will expect some soreness and that is totally okay. That is totally normal. And honestly, something that kind of gives you a little bit of, hey, I work hard. My body's breaking down a little bit. That is what we're doing as we're exercising. Um, and body weight is always good. I mean, Bingo. body body weight's not going to kill your body too much. Absolutely. It's actually just going to activate those muscles before you go out for a run or, you know, the day after a run or day before. I mean, I know when I go for a long run and I maybe did a little bit of strength training the day before and I feel my glutes, it actually helps me because it brings my attention to the fact that I work the glutes. And that way, when I go out running, I know that I am activating my glute muscles instead of just solely relying on my quads we talked about quadzilla or you know lack of hamstring and glute strength and runners is common so you know it kind of it almost kind of brings your attention to it if you have just a little bit of soreness back then. right and kind of like you said the body weight movements a lot of times what you're seeing here um and the body weight movements that's why we're trying to uh, a little bit of proprioception teach you how to use your body in space um a lot of times for people who have less experience that split squat that you saw stephanie uh, demo so well we have people falling all over the place so even if it's not necessarily a i want to get bigger muscles or i want to get stronger that's kind of just kind of teaching your body to be in the positions that you would want them to be in right. cool. um all right melissa rayner what constitutes cross training anything but running weight training but not legs so we kind of touched on this a little bit just want to make sure we answer your question melissa um right so kind of like we said earlier um Kind of anything but your sport, whatever your sport may be. And for you all, it seems to be distance running. Yep. So I would say things that are going to supplement that, that kind of get you away from that distance running. Um, what you're kind of looking at in the, uh, in the back, they're getting, they're getting their bicycle Cross on. Cross training. Before they did that, they did some rowing. And eventually, you'll see them do some running as well. Um, I would also say long distance running. One thing that is not long distance running is short distance running. Or walking. Right? Or walking. Walking would also be something that could... Maybe on a lighter day, you, your body's kind of taking a beating. We can still get out there and do something, but not necessarily have the beating on our body that a long run would do. So some short distance running. You'll see some of our athletes in here will actually do some sprinting. Even those people that identify as a runner or a long distance runner, we'll still make them do sprints, being able to get up to a top speed because there are times in a long distance run where we kind of want to kick that gas going and kind of get going fast. So it is nice to have kind of all those different experiences of 
the walking all the way to the long distance running, even some sprints done in there, yes. Yeah, or um, some jumping. Uh, I know. I, I, I recently read that um, some jumping activities, like jumping squats or uh, just, just single leg jumping can actually improve your pace, improve your speed, improve Absolutely. your gait. So um, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you guys add those things. Right, right. Actually, the group, uh, I had a group here yesterday that they actually had box jumps and a lot of those things we're looking on strengthening the kind of the hip, the knee, and the ankle. As we jump, we extend all three of those joints. And the better we are at those movements, the stronger those are going to be, the more injury resilient those joints are going to be as we do this. So kind of kind of stimulating your body to a point that it's never experienced so that when you experience it during running, the body's like, hey, I know how to do this. It's fine. No big deal. I'm not going to yeah. get hurt doing this. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, well, quick thing, Q&A section, guys. This is your last chance. We're almost done here. Um, and then John Bryant. Hi, John. John Bryant said, how do you strengthen, strengthen the back, which I assume he's referring to the lower back because he's saying that it hurts as he's running for long periods of time. And I have heard this a lot that people say, oh, my, my lower back just starts hurting so bad when I run a long distance. So what are some of the reasons why that might be happening first and foremost? Sure. So one thing that's going to happen, and I've heard a lot of people kind of, kind of say this sort of same thing that Stephanie was just talking about, is... A lot of times, sometimes that lower back just needs to be strengthened. Sometimes we do not have a lot of experience kind of putting putting that lower back under some stress. So when it is put it under the stresses of running and we maybe don't have some good posture and we start to run like this, that's going to put some stress on that lower back and that's just going to result in a little bit of pain. Um, so strengthen your lower back, different things that we could be doing. Um, Superman. One, Superman. Superman <laughs> is the one that Stephanie mentioned earlier. That's going to put a little bit of stress on the lower back. I know they are not super fun. People do not typically enjoy a Superman. Well, what it is is going to do is it's going to strengthen that part of your lower back here, those erector muscles. You're going to get those stronger. So as they get stronger, probably not going to wither down and kind of break as much as a weaker lower back would. Another thing that's going to go right along with the back, right along with the front. That, that core training is going to be something that goes along with that lower back stuff. Stronger the core, stronger the lower back. We're going to do our best to minimize those uh, lower back. So basically back the plank is just going to kind of take care of both sides of Plank, it, right? Plank's going to be great. Plank, so be John, water. you need to be planking, man. Planks are a great <laughs> movement. They're going to be something that I know this group did in their warm-up. A lot of our different groups are going to be doing different planking variations and manipulating those variables to make it harder for whatever population it is. So that's where it's going to kind of be on you all or come here. We can help you out. Um, and we'll kind of do our best to find a planking variation or a core variation to kind of suit your needs and whatever you need to get better at. Awesome. Okay. We covered a lot, guys, um, and it seems like no one really has many questions right now. So you can always post questions when we. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the lower back suggestions. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed those. Yeah, work the core, work the back. So um, I, I do hear that problem a lot from distance runners that their back starts hurting. Um, so take that into consideration. But um, this is going to be posted again in the Facebook group. So if there are questions that arise as you're watching this, maybe not live feel free to post questions there. We'll take care of them. We can look at them and, and really try to help you guys out. So um, a big thank you for Dan Martin with us today here at Norton Sports Performance Center. Again, if you haven't checked this place out, come in, check it out, get the free yoga. Guys, it's free yoga three days a week in March here. It, yoga is going to help you with those single leg work, the core work, the back work, and the stretching all at once. So Get in here, give it a try. Don't be afraid. There's a lot of beginners and you can always come and just see if you like it. See if you like the sports center and have fun. Um, so next time, uh, Tuesday talk. Next week is going to be about nutrition. That's an important one, guys. We're going to cover just general nutrition. We're also going to cover nutrition while you're training. And of course, we are going to touch on nutrition ideas or suggestions for race day. Hopefully you've been working through a couple of things on what you're going to be using for your nutrition and hydration as you've been training. But we want to make sure that you got it right. Your, your calorie out or calorie burn versus your calorie intake. We want to kind of get those aligned up for race day so you can make it through the entire race and not feel like total doo-doo. Okay. So <laughs> tune in next week, Tuesday talk at noon with nutrition to cover that topic. If you have questions, bring them on. We want the questions and we hope to see you then. It is Tuesday, guys. I'm pretty sure there's a run on your schedule. So go out, get your run. Thank you again, Dan. And we will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. It's beautiful outside. Enjoy.